So typically when talking about the mechanical advantage of a lever, we look at the input and output forces as though they act perpendicular to the lever. But today I want to show you how to find the mechanical advantage of a lever when the input force is not at a nice neat right angle to the lever. Now for any simple machine, mechanical advantage is defined as the force out divided by the force in. And for a lever, we typically calculate mechanical advantage as d in over d out, where d is the distance from the fulcrum or the pivot point to either of the forces. The problem is, if either of these forces are not perpendicular to the lever, this equation over here no longer applies. See, this input force produces a torque or a twisting moment around the pivot point of the lever. No different than a wrench produces a torque on a bolt. Now, torques given by the equation RF sine theta, where R is the distance from the pivot point to the force. This is what most people refer to as leverage. F is, of course, the force, and theta is the angle between the force and the radius vector. And the whole idea behind a lever is that provided it's completely efficient, the torque from this input force over here gets transferred to the output side of the lever, meaning the torque into the lever equals the torque out. So applying the torque equation to both sides of the lever, we can rearrange this equation for the mechanical advantage of our lever. And realize this R in the equation is no different than what we we're calling D earlier, that is the distance from the pivot point to the force. Now looking at this equation, as long as the two angles are the same, these two sine terms cancel out. And we have the typical equation for mechanical advantage. But if either of these forces are at some other angle, we have to leave these terms in. So let's put some numbers to this and I'll show you the consequence of angling one of these forces. See, so starting with the typical case of having our forces perpendicular to the lever. If we push on this side of the lever with an input force of say 50 newtons, plugging in the dimensions of the lever as well as our input force over here, we'll find the lever is going to produce 100 newtons of output force. Now most people would say that this lever has a mechanical advantage of two, but that's a bit inaccurate. So if we change the direction of this input force to how about just 30 degrees between the lever and the force, our input angle over here is gonna to change to 30 degrees, meaning the output force is gonna to drop to 50 newtons and our mechanical advantage drops to just one. Meaning the mechanical advantage of a lever is not just defined by its dimensions or its lengths. We also have to factor in the direction of the forces relative to the lever. And you can see that since the sine of an angle is maximized at 90 degrees, if we push on the input side of this lever at any angle other than 90 degrees, we're going to be losing mechanical advantage. And according to the math, we should see the opposite thing on the other side of the lever. Changing the direction of the output force can increase the mechanical advantage. Now, how we could possibly get an output force to act at an angle starts to get into compound machines, not simple machines that we're dealing with here. And that's a topic for another day. But down in the description, I'll link my videos on compound machines, torque, and something called the effective moment arm, which is another way to look at what happens when a force acts at an angle relative to a lever. So I hope you found this useful. And that's all for now.